Here's how to make a Metallica design in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you guys my design process, some time lapse in this video as well, and uh, show you guys how I do things. I hope you enjoy it. Before we get into today's video, I wanna give a huge shout out to my sponsorship over at Envato Elements. I use Envato Elements for everything. That includes fonts, stock video, music, everything you can even think of in the creative space, they have it. Download millions of video templates, WordPress themes, photos, graphic templates, and more. Deliver better projects faster with ready to use graphic, web, and video templates. 10 million community members, guys, are on this platform for a reason. Use my link in the description below to get 50% off an annual subscription. You guys will not regret it. With that being said, let's get back to the video. I created some 3D text using After Effects and I imported it into Photoshop, so that part I'm not gonna go over today. But the second thing I'm doing now is just importing a moon that I found on unsplash.com. I thought this would make a great back piece for the design. Since we are working with layers, it's best to think about the design in layers. So we got the moon first, we got the 3D text on top of that, and we're just basically layering this design in order to get the design at the end that we want. And it wouldn't be a Charlie Pingus design without the filter gallery effects, which is torn edges and grain. Sometimes I use halftone pattern, but you guys see me use this effect all the time, and it's just simply to process the image to make it look more photocopied, less like a just an image that I found online, right? So I'm applying these effects and adjusting the parameters in order to get the uh, desired look. And I suggest you guys play with these a lot because they're fun and you can make any photo look really interesting just by doing this. Now I'm using color range to select all the white so I can change the moon to any color that I want without having the dark tones affect the image. And it looks something like this. And I'm going to probably go with that purple color just because I think it looks really nice. And I have this idea of throwing like a poppy orange or yellowish color on top of the moon to really make this design come together and have obviously multiple tones. Next step was finding a font to use for Master of Puppets, which I was going to add to the bottom of the design. And I wanted to go with a scratchy font. So Envato Elements was obviously the perfect choice to find the perfect font. And I did just that. I found a font that I really liked. So you're seeing me right here, just look for it, and then I'm downloading it, installing it, and uh, actually using it in Photoshop. So it's a really straightforward process. I'm typing out Master of Puppets now using the type tool. You can just hit T on your keyboard to find that. And I wanna use that font that I just downloaded from Envato Elements, of course. If you have an Envato Elements subscription, just type in Scratch and you will find it under fonts. Now it's a matter of just placing the text where I want it and kind of warping it, manipulating it in certain ways to make it look, again, the way I want it. And there's no other way to put it, honestly. It just takes a lot of playing around and practice and you will achieve the look you're going for, but um, everybody has their own taste. So really you have to obviously learn how to spell too. Right here I'm misspelling this completely, but it's okay. Um, but yeah, just honestly take your time. Practice makes perfect, so don't try to copy me exactly because you're going to fail that way. Honestly, do what you think looks good and you're always going to succeed. like me and you don't do a ton of illustration by hand, then you might want to look for stock photos to use in your designs. And that's totally fine. Now in this design, I used a, what they call a public domain image. So what this is, is basically an old school movie poster from, let's say anywhere from the 1950s to the 1980s, depending on the, the copyright on it. And it is, it's expired. And that goes into the public domain, which allows people like me to use it. So this is completely free to use. You're allowed to use it because it is entered into the public domain. Dumbed down version is that the copyright expired and it's in the public eye now, so you can use it. So um, you do have to be careful doing this. You wanna make sure that you know 110% that you can use it before printing it. But uh, this is definitely one that I know is in the public domain, so I'm pretty confident using it but uh, that's just something to keep in mind. To cut the background out, I'm literally just using the lasso tool and the eraser tool, really keeping it simple here. got done cutting out all the images and now it was time to kind of manipulate the photo a little bit because I didn't want to leave it as is obviously. So what I ended up doing was I took the skeletons, what would it be, the right hand, and I ended up lowering it a little bit and making it look like he's holding a head. 
So I was definitely trying to just make it my own and I encourage you guys to do the same thing. So I'm just doing a lot of cutting, pasting, and blending using layer masks and all that stuff. And again, using the lasso tool to uh, just select around certain parts of the image and delete it or move it. And uh, this is kind of just a process that gets repeated over and over again until I get the look that I'm going for. Once that was all done, all I did was added my typical torn edge and grain effect under filter gallery and gave it this like photocopy look. And I thought it looked really, really cool. So I ended up sticking with it. I did have some issues with my selection. So I'm just going through with the eraser tool now in order to clean it up. And this took way longer than it probably should have. And my recommendation for fixing this problem is just take way longer on the selection part of things. Like when you're cutting things out of the background, really take your time because it's going to make the whole design process so much easier. But in this case, I was rushing this design. Um, obviously, it's for a YouTube video only. I'm not actually printing this, so I don't take as long as I would normally on a real client. So anyway, that's just something to keep in mind, but uh, enjoy the rest of this part. After tweaking the design for a little bit, I landed on this and I ended up adding a gradient map over everything and just messed with the different gradients that are built into Photoshop along with some blending modes. And that's how I got the final look, but I wasn't quite done. I wanted to add some lightning behind everything. I found some lightning that was on a black background, which was perfect because all I had to do to blend it into my design was change the blend mode to screen and it worked perfectly. A little bit of resizing and warping here and there and I was able to come up with something that I was really, really happy with. Check out the final design and let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below and who should I design for next? If you guys really enjoyed this video go ahead and follow me on instagram at charlie pangas i'm always on there and i post all the time and it's a great way to connect with me so that's it i'll see you guys in the next one